literature review. It's probably the most dreaded thing to do element of a research paper or a, or a thesis that almost every PhD student or researcher really struggles with. So that's why in this video I want to talk about the main problems and the main pitfalls of doing a literature review so that you can avoid these and make your literature review journey much smoother. So let's dive in and see how this is done. If you're new here, my name is Mario Kiczkowiak and I run Academic English Now, where I help PhD students and researchers regularly publish their research papers in top Scopus Index journals. Problem number one is lack of a clear search strategy. So what happens is that a lot of people when searching the literature, they just kind of have a very piecemeal, chaotic strategy or no strategy at all. And they search different papers, they find something and that's linked to something else. And then they find something else and they never really keep track of anything or of the keywords that they're using. They're using all sorts of databases. And that's really a big problem because then, you know, your, the results that you're gonna get are very unsystematic and very unpredictable. And when you need to solve a certain problem, well, you, you can't even solve it because you don't know what led to that problem, right? So what you need to do first is to have a clear strategy, to find the databases, to find the keywords that you're going to use. And the second problem, which I can, I'm gonna segue into, is a lack of sort of keeping the data in one place. So people find articles and then they find more articles and then they reject some and then they continue reading others and then they find even more articles. And you know, again, it's very chaotic and it comes back to this lack of plan. What you need to do is be more systematic about it and then keep a record of the articles that you got after a search and then which ones were rejected and why you rejected those so that you know and your strategy is much more systematic. Now, the third really big problem that I see a lot of people have is doing the referencing manually. And in the 21st century, I can't, my brain can't comprehend why you would wanna be doing it manually or why you would wanna be using such a horrible program like EndNote, for example. And I've got another video about a much better program, which is Zotro. You can also choose Mendeley, which is a very common program, but please don't do it manually. You're wasting so much time and so much effort. Do it using a program. And the sooner you start, the better. You'll save so much time and you will do it accurately as well. So that's the third uh, problem. Now, the, the fourth thing that I can see is kind of lack of a clear structure to the literature review. And especially, you know, if you're writing a long piece, like a whole literature review chapter that might have like, I don't know, 50 or 60 pages, it's difficult to kind of see that structure. But what you want to do is try to organize it and structure things before you start writing and have a plan and try to organize the main topics, identify like, you know, five or so big topics, literature review topics that you're going to address, right? And then organize them usually from general to specific. Another good way of organizing things might be chronological, especially if you're trying to present some sort of development, right? You can also organize it less commonly, but you still can by different disciplines. If you have a multidisciplinary research, you can present the perspective from psychology, economics, and so on, right? But the structure, the most common one is from general to specific. So definitely try to organize things because a lack of structure is a big, big problem. And related to that is a lack of clear direction. So usually, you know, people just kind of review the literature and then just write and then they review another study and another study. And when I ask people like, well, what's the point? Well, where are you going with it? Usually they're, they're very confused. They look at me as if I was from Mars, but that's a really important question. I mean, why are you reviewing this particular study? Where are you going with it? What, what point are you trying to make here? Don't just describe the studies, right? You've got to be leading us somewhere. And usually where you're leading us is maybe to a problem. For example, you wanna show us that some of the previous studies are limited. Or maybe where you're leading us, you wanna 
tell us a little bit more about you know the specific types of methodologies that were used or differently you want to point out you know the specific topics that were studied right or you want to summarize the main results i don't know but there's got to be a specific point you're leading us somewhere think about the literature review as a sort of a road and you need to know the destination of a specific section subsection so that the reader is not lost on that road so keep that end of the road in mind now the next problem and i think that's now problem five i'm not very good at maths but i think it is problem five is that people are very descriptive in the literature review what does that mean you know and maybe that's a comment that you've heard from your supervisor if you have them comment below and let me know but people just kind of describe the literature it's kind of related to this lack of direction you know and what, what they do is they just describe the study and then they just say you know one study showed this another one showed this another one showed this and it's just a list of different studies or even worse still there, there is a lot of waffling right so in other words people use a million words not to say anything they just talk and write and write and write without really telling us anything right so what happens is that people tell us you know where the study was conducted how it was conducted what was the name of the study who published it and in what year and so on and god knows what else but really most of the time what we are interested in as readers is the results of the study and how those results are related to what you're trying to do or tell us right so stop waffling and stop being descriptive get to the point now the next point and i think that's number six is that there's a lack of criticality so this is related to being very descriptive but also when you're reviewing the literature you do need to point out some problems with it criticize it you know assess it evaluate it a little bit don't just you know review all sorts of different studies and make a list of previous studies you need to evaluate now problem number seven is that people organize the paragraphs by sort of one study what do i mean by that well what i've seen is that sometimes people will just they think that you know they need to present every study in a lot of detail so they have one paragraph about one study and then the next paragraph is about another study and then another study and another study but this makes your text very very descriptive there's too much waffling and 90 percent of the time you don't need so many details about one particular study you would only want to focus on one particular study in so much detail and have like you know four or five sentences about it if it's like the most groundbreaking study there is and you want to make specific points about this study other than that organize your paragraphs by topics and then refer to different studies under that specific topic in one paragraph now another problem that i can see and i think that's problem eight is that people tend to start every sentence with the name of the authors so what happens is that they say like you know gonzalez found that and then they say you know you discovered that and then they say you know kitschkoviak reveals that and then they say smith argues that but what this does is that a it makes your text very repetitive and then b there are no connections between your ideas it's just a list of stuff right there is no direction there are no connections or nothing like that right so make sure that you vary that referencing pattern a little bit more you know and then rather than always start with the name of the author start with something that links back to what was said previously right so these are the eight most common mistakes and challenges that I see, you know, PhD students and researchers face when it comes to writing the literature review. And if you would like more help writing your literature review, if you want to publish papers in top journals in your field, then definitely let's talk. Me and my team scheduled some time in our calendars to speak to you one-to-one -one, and you can book that free one-to-one -one consultation right below this video. We're going to identify the challenges that you're facing, talk about your goals and outline a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals.